Welcome to another commentary done by Diggity Upper End Corner. We have DeWalt starting as the White Protoss. Bottom left hand corner, we have Zeke starting as the Blue Zerg. This is going to be on Eclipse. Actually, I think, am I going to do this? No, I'm going to keep the colors here. Felt like doing the color swap for a second, but anyway. Game one, going to DeWalt, just felt like Zeke was a bit off his game. Uh, really, the big things were a late layer, and I'm wondering if that's because of the Probe Scout that was in his base. And maybe I was missing that. So that, and it felt like DeWalt was really able to capitalize on that by getting some early overlords. And then DeWalt with a follow-up, I like the cor the heavy Corsair play. And I'm wondering if he's going to opt to do that again. And I've actually been wondering, like for, for a good long time, I've been wondering, well, two things. So one, I've, real, I've found out from uh, a lot of Protoss players that the mix of... Um, I was thinking, you know, as far as going up against the 973 and whatever the current meta for a while, people are saying, well, maybe we should be going Ro maybe you should be going Rovo and going two gate uh, Reaver, but I guess Reaver too slow, too costly to defend, and it's just not an effective strategy in the late game. But the big trick in the current meta is, is how do you protect those High Templar? How do you make your High Templar free to do their thing, to stay alive, to drop the storms effectively? Looks like we're seeing a nine pool from Ziki, by the way. Or sorry, over pool from Ziki, by the way. Um, <laughs> seeing the overlords, <laughs> I just need to look at, I need to look at the upper left-hand corner on occasion. Uh, but anyway, having the additional Corsair and just seizing map, uh, seizing air control like that, first of all, forcing Ziki more in a defensive position. And then, and I think it almost, what happened there is because it's a large enough map and because Zerg are kind of taking their third to establish that third gas and trying to protect that, um, it almost makes them, it looks like, oof, blindly taking uh, Nexus first before Scout. Very risky play here. Let's see if it pays off. So one one probe moving out. Now there's that forge down. Spawning pool up. Now the question is, is how many Zerglings get produced? Are we gonna see, we are seeing four initially. Hatchery has been placed. The probe making its way across. And it looks like we are going to see the full six Zerglings. Now keep in mind, this wasn't just a straight nine pool. It was over pool. <clears throat> but with the timing of this, this probe does need to get in the way. Oh, sacrificing its life, being a good distraction actually to buy time to go ahead and get that first cannon up. But even with this, some probes might need to be pulled to deal with these Zerglings. Zerglings making their way across the map. Should be, should be okay. DeWalt holding position and actually reverse the player. I think I was saying Zeke instead of DeWalt there for a second. because my brain today. Gateway down. Which is weird because I'm actually feeling pretty good. Third hatchery already going up the 9 o'clock location. So actually just straight up 3 hatch uh, to start. Attacking his own forge for some reason. It's a warning to the other Zerglings. Attacking his own units. And now that the two cannons are up, he's going to go ahead and back off. But... Yeah, needed, good pull, just in case. Extractor, now we're going out for Zeke. Assimilator warping in. But DeWalt, yeah, going to get a little bit of a boost by having that Nexus out. So yes, he lost a modicum, a little teeny bit, of mining time. The Zergling's going to try to shoot that gap. They might be able to actually run through if they wanted to grab a scout. First sell it being produced. Looks like the Zergling's going to go ahead and flood back to main base. Now here's the thing though, DeWalt this time in the dark versus Zeke, which is always a dangerous position against players of this quality. Hydralis Den is being built, so it looks like this might be something along something 973-ish. There's two drones right there. We'll see if he starts flooding uh, this out here, but DeWalt did get that Nexus down a little bit earlier. He's got that Cybernetics Core down. The critical thing for DeWalt is he wants to get that scouting information, and maybe if he can sneak out under the probe, he is moving another probe out here. The Overlord spots it. The Zerglings are now being dispatched to go ahead and try to engage. I'm almost wondering if he just planted two Zerglings on the ramp here and relied on the other four Zerglings to kind of do some boxing, if that would have helped. It looks like that probe has been found. This is going to be critical. If DeWalt can get that scout on that third base and get a good look, he'll be in a much more comfortable situation. Stargate warping in. But without that bit of information, it is much more difficult to in, to deal with this. You basically have to dedicate more resources than you might want to on the front. Looks like we do have, looks like six uh, drones over there and we are seeing the three drone transfer. So it's just gonna be one short of a true 973 because you only got the uh, six drones right there. But basically 
Yeah, basically going to be 973. Probe has been boxed out. The Zealots are now moving out. With those Zerglings distracted, and I don't know that Overlord saw it at all. So with this timing, as the Hydralisks are making their way towards the front, they might need to reposition. Let's see, this Overlord's going to spot it. Does This is great play from DeWalt. So Hydralisks is going to engage. So now he, first of all, knows that this is more the 973 build because he's seen the Hydralisks starting to flood out. Secondarily, these Zealots out on the front are buying him time. And third, he actually might be able to get some drone kills. It's certainly disrupting Zeke's economy. Really heads up play, especially with that Overlord out of position on the front. So really capitalize, capitalizing on this. The one downside of this is DeWalt loses critical defense forces he needed on his front, but he knows he needs to plop down all sorts of cannons immediately. And now that Corsair moving out to go ahead and get additional scouting information. This At this stage, yeah, it looks like upon seeing that, Zeke wisely going ahead and plopping down another hatchery. He's already invested quite a bit into Hydralisks, but he knows DeWalt's in position to go ahead and defend this. DeWalt dropping two gateways on the low ground. Getting a second forge into in his main. He does have that Citadel of Adun. He's going to go ahead and get try to get weapons one on top of all that. Looks like the Corsair trying to hunt, get that scouting information. Maybe might get an Overlord here, depending, because I don't see a second Hydralisk being built. And so if it wants to suicide into this, might be able to get something accomplished there. And as I'm ignoring this, Zeke diving into the front a little bit. One cannon down. I do like that DeWalt, yeah. Went ahead and put this forge up and started weapons one back here because all so often you just have to sacrifice everything on the front. And too many Protoss players have noticed they just try to hope that that's going to get up and don't cancel it and don't spend those resources in time. Anyway, skeleton crew of Hydralisks on the front. Corsair still getting plenty of scouting information. Second gas being grabbed the natural expansion. And Zeke, yeah, has to make decisions from here as how easy he's going to adjust his play. It looks like DeWalt wants to go ahead and transition into a four gate uh, Zealot plus one leg speed follow-up. I don't think once leg speed finishes, he's just going to wander out with these zealots just yet. I think he wants to build a sufficient attack force. These are mostly, I think, to buffer just in case of a secondary all-in, although against this amount of hydralisks, might be able to get something accomplished, and it is going to keep Zeke honest and forced to micro here. A couple hydralisks getting picked off. They can Hydralisks in sufficient numbers and large enough space can, even against with speed zealots and some nice distance, can continue to micro like this. It looks like, yeah, our picking zealots off, but what that does do is, is it provides a bit of room. It looks like that Corsair going to sneak underneath and try to pick off that Overlord. He's going to be able to do so. Zeke's going to go ahead and grab that 10 o'clock base. In the meantime, the Hydro is sneaking back across, trying to take care of that Corsair. So an interesting dance between these Hydralisks and Zealots. Now across the 9 o'clock location, two Zealots have managed to sneak through. Let's see if some defense forces can get up. It looks like some Hydralis trying to group up across that 3 o'clock. So Zeke really being taxed. And DeWalt can just kind of attack move across all of this. Is he going to wander up? Somehow, psychically knew this base was going up. So just as that hatchery's finished, some Zealots are on top of it. Some Hydralis reinforcements moving up to the north. So DeWalt doing a good job of being absolutely everywhere. And just being a, a general annoyance with just a handful of Zealots. Let's see if he actually peels off of these Zealots. Yeah, just kind of run them to the north. Force Zeke to try to defend absolutely everywhere. More... Zelts engaging, and this is basically forcing more Hydralisks to be built to deal more Hydralisks, fewer drones, and really taxing the upgrades. And wow, for, so six gateways in the background. DeWalt wanting to build a lot of units in the meantime. Some Zealots getting up to the 10 o'clock base. The Hydralisks actually doing the Zealot trick and trying to hide behind that mineral line. More Zealots are going to flood in. Unfortunately, the the, while the Hydralisks can do range and get some damage done there, they are also kind of trapped and can't really escape. The Zelts, again, sneaking out to the corner. Another Hydralisk out and another grouping of Zelts. So this is just going to be... This is an interesting play from DeWalt. It looks like what he wants to do is just continue to harass, continue to try to keep that Hydralisk count low, punish this economy, and eventually just get overwhelming amounts of Zelts at multiple locations. And harass... Zeke's economy that direction. That's really interesting to watch. So 10 o'clock location moving up. Creek Colony trying to be built. There's a bunch of Zealots already engaging right there. One Zealot also at the 9 o'clock location. And you can just see how taxing this is for Zeke to deal with. Just units absolutely everywhere. And the decision-making pressure. It looks like he's going to try to respond to this by building a bunch of Mutalisks in the air. Dark Templar is going to be out 
momentarily as well. Sutton Colony right there. Just doesn't want to deal with it. But while that was happening, four Zealot kills at the 9 o'clock location. And additional Overlords getting picked off overhead. Another grouping of Zealots marching out. Looks like they are going to be able to engage that 9 o'clock base. Of course, the Mutalisks, as soon as they spawn, should be able to deal with everything here. But this is a lot of gas that Zeke did not want to spend on this particular set of units. And his economy has really been stifled in the meantime. And it's just been it's fun to watch. DeWalt just be everywhere on the map and do all sorts of harassment. Somehow Zealot managed to get in the main. It's managed to get additional kills. So really, really disrupting Zeke's economy. Continuing to macro up behind this. A cannon warping in to deal with a potential Mutalist threat and more gateways popping down. So DeWalt looks like he wants to get it done just through overwhelming unit counts on the front. That forge somehow is still up. <clears throat> and he's going to go ahead and have that uh, interesting shield upgrade. As far as his third upgrade, not sure I've seen that before. Dark Templar moving out. And actually might be able to open up this front door as the Overlords are still not speed upgraded. And I don't see speed up upgrading in the background. A bunch of Zelts flooding into the 10 o'clock location. A bunch of Mulus trying to dive in there. And Zeke might lose this hatchery just through pure Zealot DPS. Before the Sunken even goes down. That's taken out. The mule is trying to push in to go ahead and clear what's left of these zealots out. But that's the fourth base down. And it looks like these zealots are going to go ahead and back off. An Archon morphing. Two Archons morphing. At the front door. Nine o'clock location being resaturated. Here's the thing. DeWalt doing a great job of economic disruption. Opening up his own front door. But with the turnaround, is he going to have the economy? And is he going to have the supply count lead? to press through he certainly has a huge upgrade advantage and i think that actually might be the thing that just straight up wins him this match because right now you got level one spines level two spines uh working for zeke and that is it that is his only upgrade he's still researching lurker tech there's plenty of zealots out on the ground and level two weapons is going to be online momentarily and there are a lot of upgrades pouring out because I do believe oh never mind miss the mulisks <laughs> while that was happening miss the mulisks going ahead and diving into the main Archon is going to be able to get there <clears throat> but it looks like they are going to get some economic disruption but the big counterattack happening at the natural expansion wondering if this is going to force those mulisks back dragoons everything pouring in here Hydra is trying to engage from the north but they're being engaged by those dragoons desperate something colonies trying to be morphed in the drones getting obliterated here and Overlord's being picked off. Everything. Just getting a just annihilated. Zealot's moving in. And Zeke going to call GG right there. Because the Archon getting on top of the Mutalisks in the main. So DeWalt taking two games to nil. Which is, on a, uh, I'll just say, expected of him. He's just so good. And you can just see his level of play. It's just kind of, I don't know. He plays a little bit of a different style here and there. He just has a lot going for him. Thanks for the raid, by the way, Urban. Good seeing you. Thanks for listening, everybody.